Okay. We have made it to the final. Round seven of a hundred plus person tournament has come down to two people. This is our Win a Box tournament on April 5th on kiptournaments.com. It's been a really great tournament. Some super good players. Lots of incredible names. And the players that have risen to the top after six rounds that are still undefeated. Dory11 and UA Gorebelt. Um, they are the only two people remaining at 6-0. and And this will be for the title for the tournament. And for a box of Worlds Collide. So, we are getting set up here in a moment. Uh, I'm getting set up. They're waiting for me because they're being very patient. I'm recording this, as always, not live. So if you're watching this, the, the round is already completed. And, um, yeah. And this this is the matchup. It's Coda versus AOA. So, we've seen both of these decks before. Dorian is up top, so we'll talk about their deck first. Garrisong, Soldado de Coop. Kuban, Kuban uh, I have slaughtered that again. We could just have a separate YouTube channel where I mispronounce foreign languages all day long. I'm sure that would be entertaining to some people and hopefully not that offensive. But that, is, Garrisong is the deck. This is the deck that we saw have a massive LA turn earlier. It's got LA, it's got Time Traveler, Maverick Soft Landing in Logos, Phase Shift, and then Double Gateway and Dis. Poltergeist, Double Life Ward, that's been a trend among a couple of top decks today. Triple Nerve Blast, Double Ghostly Hand, Relentless Whispers, Customs Office, I don't know if Customs Office matters a whole lot, but it can matter a lot in a lot of mashups. Uh, just Mother, just all sorts of fast, fast, efficient, moderately disruptive, very effective cards, very good deck. And then uh, Gorbelly is playing... The Mellow Empiricist. The Mellow Empiricist we just saw defeat Nathan last round uh, from Team Sass. The Mellow Empiricist is a very good AOA deck. Super good. Shark. The Shark is going to come into play again. Neutron Shark this turn, this game. It's going to come into play again because of the two life wards. So being able to shark out some life wards could be very, very important here. Igor, Double Lab Work, Time Traveler, Double Research Smoko. Uh, Oath of Poverty, which doesn't have a lot of impact in this game, uh, in this deck, but, you know, it can occasionally burst you a little. We saw it work last game. Again, the TMTP. So the threat of TMTP, I don't think the other deck has Scaling Steel, right? No, the other deck does not have Scaling Steel. So the threat of TMTP is going to be another very important thing. We saw Gorbelli last game find TMTP early, archive it, and basically hold that threat over Nathan's head the entire game, which does substantially impact how people play the games. Um, Dorian has a very fast deck that generates a lot of Amber. So holding TMTP, if he can, if um, Gorbelli can find it early, holding TMTP is going to become incredibly important this round, or at least the, 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 the threat of TMTP. Whether he's actually holding it or not holding it, just haven't played it, um, Dorian won't be able to get out of control in terms of Amber Gen. So we are ready. Um, telling the telling the competitors we're good to go. Here we go. All right. Welcome to the final round. I don't have any DMCA-appropriate final round dramatic music for you, but just imagine jock jams from, you know, 1997 playing in your hand, playing in your head, and you'll get kind of the feel that I'm vibing over here. Dorian plays Mother Turn 1, Great Turn 1 play, and he has a massive Shadows turn on, on tap. Gorbelly forced to go into... Well, not forced. Plays Logos. And uh, Dorian is going into the Shadow's turn. You saw, I'm sorry, I got distracted for a second there. There's a Time Traveler. Uh, you play the Lab Work Archive the card. Setting up for a Sanctum turn. Meanwhile, Dorian, here comes the Shadows. Uh, oh, wait a second. Hold on. What did I miss there? Dorian played 
Shadow Self, Pawn Sack. Oh, Held at least one Nerf Blast. I don't know if he had both in hand. I think Held and Urchin, just holding a lot of steel. That's an interesting strategy. The There's a lot of time where holding cards is wrong, but the, the power of Dorian's hand, Dorian is gambling here that Gorbelli is going to be generating a lot of Amber this turn and can hit with Shadows. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. We can see that from Gorbelli's hand. Gorbelli is going to kill the Shadow Self if he plays out the cards correctly. So he can play a Sir Maros. He can, uh, yeah, smite the Grey Rider into Shadow Self using the uh, the Gatekeeper to also fight into Shadow Self. So we announced before this tournament because, uh, like yesterday, there were rules updates made with cards, and I believe in. Uh, no, hold on, hold on. Yeah, there's there's a bit of an issue here. We announced yesterday that we're not doing, and I think we reiterated this morning. We're not because the TCO slash Kip client that we're running has not been reworked yet. Um, has not been re reworked yet to... Okay, hold on. So we're gonna have, we have a judge call here. This is the first time I've had a judge call live. Paging Blinking Line, who is our very valiant and super awesome judge that's volunteered in this event. We're paging Blinking Line to the final. Um, we're getting Blinking Line to the final here. Masking the competitors to type the line they were attempting to do here. Blinking line will come in the final. So I think what they were trying to do is they were trying to kill both. Shadow Self was at five damage. I'm asked, I've asked Corbelli to recount the line of play. Cast Smite on Rider to attack. So yeah, Shadow Self was at 9 damage. Okay. Shadow Self was at 9 damage. Sorry, 9 power. It was at 5 damage. Tried to smite the Grey Rider into... Smite the Grey Rider into Shadow Self. Grey Rider deals 2 damage to Shadow Self, deals 2 damage to Mother. But the, the damage for Mother should be redirected to Shadow Self. Gatekeeper then tries to fight Mother. I think that's correct. I think he's right that Mother should be dead. I think Gatekeeper should have killed Mother. Blinking Line is here. Gorbelli is recounting. Recounting the line of play. So he, he used Smite to fight the Grey Rider into the Shadow Self, dealing it. Uh, two extra damage there, bringing the damage up to seven. Then dealing two damage to a neighbor, which Shadow Self absorbs. So Shadow Self should be dead. And then... Hold on.
All right. So I don't know the answer to this question. I think I know, but I just I clarified the question to the judge. Does the fight trigger on Grey Rider resolve after the extra splash damage from spite from Smite or before? Because the issue here, okay, so let me try to put this as simply as I can. Grey Rider has a fight ability. When it fights, after it's done fighting, you may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. The card Smite says ready and fight with a creature. So we ready and fought with Grey Rider into the Shadow Self. Shadow Self then took the two damage from the fight. Now the question is... Does the fight ability for Grey Rider resolve in between these two sentences? Does the fight ability for Grey Rider resolve after the first fight of Smite? So it would then read, ready and fight with a friendly creature, then do the fight ability for Grey Rider, which would cause a Gatekeeper to fight into Mother, and then deal the two extra damage? Or does the whole Smite card resolve and then the Grey Rider fight, um, then the Grey Rider fight ability triggers? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I think... I think that Smite deals two splash damage after the fight ability resolves. I think that the Grey Rider's fight ability is a nested ability. Um, I am not 100% sure about if that's correct. But I think it's a nested ability because this implies that you fight with the creature and that the fight is completely done, right? That the fight is completely done and then you do something else. I don't think that this is a... I don't think this is affected by the most recent ruling. I think the ruling on this would be the same before and after the clarification in the Crucible cast this week. This is a tough call. I do not actually know the answer to this question. All right, just telling the competitors this is a complicated situation and definitely not obvious. So let me try to fill some of the dead time here while we're, um, while we're doing the important work of making sure the ruling on this is correct. So let's reset where we are in the game right now. So Gorbelli is going to end this turn with no Amber. Um, doesn't matter what the ruling is. Like Gatekeeper will, uh, will have killed the mother or not killed the mother. So Gorbelli is going to rule... Um, is, is Gorbelli is going to end the turn with no Amber. We talked a moment ago about what decisions Dorian had, right? Dorian had a decision before of whether to play all the Shadows cards out or discard them or hold them. Dorian opted to hold them. To hold, hold them. Dorian opted to hold them. Uh, and, uh, and as a result, um, as a result, he was hoping... They were hoping, sorry, should not assume gender. They were hoping that Gorbelli would have, um, would, that Gorbelli would have Amber on the way back. We have a judge ruling now, so let me go back into the judge ruling. It looks like, I'm reading the, bl the, the what the blinking line is saying. The play effect of smite says to ready and fight, then it does the damage. The, f 
the fight opens up a window within the playability, resolving... I think he means within the fight ability, but within the within the fight ability, resolving to resolve the fight ability of the Grey Rider. So, Blinking Line is, it appears, and we'll get confirmation in a moment, it does appear as though Blinking Line's ruling is what I instinctually thought the ruling should be earlier. Again, uh, yeah, he's saying it's ready Grey Rider, fight with Grey Rider, resolve Grey Rider's fight ability, finish resolving Smite's damage. I think that's correct. Yes, I think that's correct. So, as it turns out, um, that that was the ruling. Ends up with damage on Gatekeeper, unfortunately, because he fought Mother, thinking that Mother would be dead, but that's not what happened. So, it doesn't really matter, because Dorian still Dorian still has a very a very strong presence in the game. The judge ruling has been made. Wow, that was, that was the most complicated... That might be one of the most complicated judge rulings I've ever seen in a final, even though it was just two cards. It was still very interesting. Maybe not the most complicated, but very interesting. So, we're back to live action. Dorian, instead of using all the Shadows cards in hand, goes to um, goes into Dis, and um, uh, goes into Dis, plays Collar, plays Red Hot Armor for the Amber, goes to check. Gorbelli finally does what Dorian has been waiting for him to do for a while, which was Kane Amber by playing Smite, Nerve Blast, or playing Brand, excuse me, Nerve Blasting Brand, Throwing Stars Brand, and now, now Gorbelli is up to five Amber, but now here comes all the Shadow stuff. So, Customs Office, Subtle Mall, do you Poison Wave here? Probably not. I don't think you Poison Wave. Uh, nerve Blast, Urchin, Discards Poison Wave, yep. So now back up to six, score Billy back down to two, and most importantly, he has refreshed his entire hand, and wow, he just drew all logos. Now, the one thing, the one thing from Gorbelli's perspective that is that is a moderate, a moderate um, good luck in this situation, even though Dorian drew crazy in that situation, that Gorbelli is is fortunate that Dorian does not have LA in hand. Because if they had a, if he had LA in hand, the next turn would be astronomically nuts um, although he would have to contend with the fact that Gorbelli is yet to play TMTP so we know Gorbelli doesn't have TMTP in his hand but Dorian does not so remember that as we play the next game Gorbelli playing Researcher Smoko Helperbot uh, Maruk the Marked and passing now I think what Dorian Dorian forces first key I think what he wants to do is he wants to play I think they want to oh Interesting. So Dorian is doing this thing a lot where they are... Oh, they played Wormhole. Never mind. I thought they weren't playing Logos. He's fishing for the LA here. So he tried finding it off the Wormhole. He didn't find it off the Wormhole. So he redrew with help, plays Time Traveler, still doesn't find the LA. So he's going to play a bunch of Logos cards and have a very good turn, but not the absolute peak nonsense turn that he would have had if he had been able to find LA... Um, in that entire sequence. He did not. But he is still drawing in terms of houses. Drawing very well because he had all logos. He had all shadows and then played all logos. And then played. And he's probably going to play uh, Dis next turn I would guess. Oh, maybe not. We'll see. He does not. He does not get to check. He gets to five. Still very good. Because Gorbelli is, is stuck at two. Unfortunately, I think Gorbelli, yeah, Gorbelli has to go Logos here. He's going to find his own Time Traveler. He fights the Smoko in. Okay, so we killed Smoko first. Now, I don't remember what's in his archive, but I don't think there's, I, I'm, there's a large pause here. I'm wondering if he, no, Time Traveler's in discard. Never mind. I was concerned that if Time Traveler was in deck, killing Smoko first would run some non-zero chance he would accidentally archive Time Traveler and blow up the help turn, which would be really bad. But Time Traveler was in discard, so that was a safe play. Finds Time Traveler, plays Time Traveler. I think you want to play Researcher here to archive help, because that seems like a very good loop to continue to go on. Um, if I'm him, I think, I think if, if I'm them, if I'm Gorbelli, I think I play ZYX Researcher before I play Lab Work, because I'd like to archive help from Future Self, which is the top card in discard. I believe that's probably what I'd like to do here. And that is... They do play Researcher first, but they don't archive help. So the arguments for not archiving help there are that you probably don't think it's super likely you're going to go into Logos immediately, although you're going to put at least four Logos cards on the board. 
I don't know. I think I might have. I think I might have archived help there, expecting that unless your opponent clears your entire board, you're probably going back into logos, and then you can do even more nonsensical things with help. But they are they opt to archive top card of deck. We'll see how that works out. They played helper bot. They have a floating helper bot trigger. What do you helper bot here? I think. You might want to, yep, Oobly, I was just going to say, you might want to Oobly at the Time Traveler, and that's exactly what happens. I think Dorian got enough use out of the Time Traveler, I don't think they're going to need it, but it does eliminate one of the future options for them in this match. Lab work, archive the card, reap with helper bot. Sir Maros does capture the Amber. And he's found TMTP. All right, so TMTP is now online. Um, question is... Do you TMTP here? Oh, and he just, Dorian just do double gateway. All right, the draws are coming back a little. Oh, he's got a crazy shadow's turn anyway, but he do double gateway. So you don't want to draw two of those gateways at the same time. He calls Sanctum. Oh, he's got gatekeeper. He archived gatekeeper. That's perfect. This is a great play. So here's what's going to happen. He's going to play gatekeeper. It's going to take him down to, to five. The next turn, Dorian's going to... Pop a life ward, probably kill gatekeeper, gain, gain more amber. That's what Gorbelli is expecting. And then he's going to TMTP him in response. So he's setting up a monstrous TMTP play. Um, yeah, that that's this is going to be really good. He does. I was unsure whether they were going to, but he does opt to um, to uh, to use the oath to burst up to nine. I think that that's probably right. Uses the Golden Order to fight Researcher and kill Batron. So here's the gateway, as expected. Uh, uses Lash, gets some value out of Lash, right? So gets gateway, is up to 9. Now Gorbelly forges a key, but has a good response to a Life Ward turn. Plays TMTP. Plays Nerve Blast, which doesn't require a creature in play. Takes him under check. Plays Throwing Stars, or discards Throwing Stars, same thing. Plays Hidden Stash to archive a card. And he's at 7. He's at check here. Dorian. Calls Shadows... Plays all of the cards that have pips on them. Plays Shadow Self. Probably pops another Life Ward here. Subtle Moles. Smite. That's a pretty good hit. Although, the Life Ward, you wouldn't have used Smite this turn anyway. Do you play Brend here? I think you play Brend. So I just put a note in the chat because people were, I'm sure, coming in to support, um, to support their, to support Dorian and friends. And they were saying stuff in Italian. I don't know Italian. I am like 99.99% repeating sure that they weren't telling him anything or giving him information in any way. And they can't see this because this is a recording. This is not a live cast. But I'm just asking them, please, not to play, not to chat during the final because I think that's super important. Um, Gorbelli. So Dorian does forge his key, goes to check. Gorbelly then plays Brend, plays Ronnie to steal back down to five and sets up himself for a potential nerve blast turn next turn. Gorbelly reefs with Shadow Self, goes to check at seven. Gorbelly, sorry, uh, Dorian does. Gorbelly is going to reap with Brend, play nerve blast, and go to check himself. That might be the answer. Oh, there's a phase shift. Okay. So, I don't think Dorian wants to go dis here. Oh, well, he's going to go dis. That's fine. I was going to say, he's got a phase shift in, um... He's got a phase shift in this LA. All right. So, we're going to have we're gonna have the, the Miracle top deck potential for LA in a moment. Dorian's going to check a 9. 9 is the number. So, here comes the LA turn. Logos. LA. Dorian. Which order do you play these things in? I think you play a phase shift to draw a card first. Plays the phase shift, finds Poltergeist. Poltergeist! Okay, so we can Poltergeist his own Lash if he can find another way to get him under. So he finds Soft Landing, Library Access, Soft Landing. 
Soft landing doesn't work. You gotta play wormhole now, I think. Because you need... Oh no, he poltergeists his own lash. Alright, so you force yourself into this situation. He plays Bookton, reads with Bookton, draws a card. I think I would have done that. No, I guess you had to do that now. Oh, finds phase shift again! Wow, what a top deck! Finds phase shift, and now he's gonna... Oh, wow! Now he's gonna phase shift into a nerve blast. Um, He finds... He redraws soft landing. Quixo... To reap with Quixo. Now he's got he's got one more phase shift hit. He's got a phase shift and nerve blast. There it is. Because he had already poltergeist the lash. What an LA turn. Wow. Woo! That's Pete Keyforge right there, ladies and gentlemen. That was what he needed. He got exactly what he needed, and I think that's it. I don't think Gorbelly. I don't think Gorbelly has a uh, has a response. Um yeah, I think that's it. I think he's out. Wow! What a comeback from Dorian. Uh, that was a monstrous LA turn. That's the thing we've been saying along, all along. Uh, when you have an LA turn... And wow. What an amazing, amazing play. Gorbelli is taking their time, as they should. Gotta make sure you don't have any outs. You can double shark the Smokos. That doesn't do anything. Uh, it'll archive cards, but I mean you can't access them, so it's not gonna prevent, it's not gonna take off check. So he's gonna shark out some things, be sad, and uh, he really is nothing to be sad about. Hold your head high. What a game. What a final. That was an amazing final. Dorian 11 is the champion of the first ever... Well, the not the first ever, but the, the weekend tournament that we had here. Uh, Dorian 11 has now, I believe, won the... As far as I know, largest online single-day Keyforge tournament in the history of the game. So you stick that on the top of your Keyforge resume, and you hang on to that, because that is an incredibly impressive accomplishment. Super great game, very well played by both parties. You had those moments where you thought the game was over and it wasn't over. Wow. Fantastic game. Extraordinarily well played. And congratulations.